I was going to talk about um, VMS clusters this time and um, kind of what they're like and how they came to be because there, there's some interesting historical context. We started designing um, clusters or, you know, started the concept back right around 1980. Um, where there was a growing interest in building really high reliability systems. Um, Tandem Computer was already in operation at that point. We felt that yeah, we needed some kind of a product to be competitive with them. Um, so reliability was, was really the, um, you know, one, one of the primary goals of clusters. Going along with that was also the ability to scale the system because we, you know, we had the VAX 780 at the time and we knew there would be faster VAXs, but they weren't coming real quick. And so we needed some means of being able to scale up the system so that we could have a VMS system with more capacity in it. And so the, the, the overall architecture of, of VMS clusters was something that, um, to a large extent, resulted from the hardware that we had to work with. Um, you know, you could argue that it's one of these cases of the tail wagging the dog, but very often um, you'll get, you know, especially in a hardware company like Digital, you, um, you would get hardware people that would design a bunch of good ideas and build the hardware and said, okay, all right, software people, you figure out how to make this work. We ended up with um, rather a different architecture than some of the other distributed systems that are available on the market. A, a lot of the, uh, the competing systems are more, if you'll call it, client server, so that you will have a particular computer system that provides a service. The classic one, of course, is a file server. And then you have other systems that are clients, and they talk to it, and they make requests. A VMS cluster is much more of a distributed operating system with a collection of computers all operating you know, cooperatively with direct access to storage. And that was really the, um, the driving feature that drove the early um, VMS cluster development. The storage people were already looking at intelligent storage controllers. And that was for a couple different reasons. Uh, one of them, just plain and simple, had to do with error recovery. They were packing you know, more and more bits onto the same disk surface, and they needed much more intelligent error recovery and error correction because as you pack the, um, the bits more densely, you get more errors, you get more complicated errors, and they wanted to be able to you know, correct the basic errors and still detect the really bad ones. So the controllers were going to get a considerable amount of smarts in them anyway, with you know, lots of buffering, uh, buffer memory and processing power and so on, just to handle the error correction. Um, and then once you've got a, a controller with that level of intelligence, the next obvious step you can think of is, well, why don't we make this multi-host as well? Rather than just being connected to a single computer, let's connect it to multiple computers and let them all use the same storage drive, you know, the, the same storage devices. Um, and that, of course, leads to a different style of cluster architecture. So along with the, the intelligent disk controllers, the, the first one of these was called the HSC-50. HSC stood for Hierarchical Storage Controller. And the interconnect between that and the computer was called the CI, which stands for Cluster Interconnect. Now, all, all of this stuff was conceived in you know, the very early 1980s. This is before even Ethernet uh, and the whole concept of local area network existed. So a CI configuration really was an early form of local area network. Um, the CI had, it had a bandwidth of 100 megabits, which was really remarkably fast for its time. The CI controller was a rather complicated piece of software, uh, I'm sorry, complicated piece of hardware. 
and it had a lot of features. Um, aside from just passing back messages, it was also capable of doing direct block transfers from one computer uh, or storage controller attached to another one. So you could move a lot of data through it with not too much involvement by the CPUs. The network was what we called a star configuration, which meant that each computer had a CI controller in it, and that CI controller was directly wired to a hub that we called a star coupler. And so there, you know, there were no other random cross connections. Everybody just connected to the hub. The hub was a remarkably simple device. It was, you know, it was this panel where you plugged in the the cables, and the only thing that connected the cables was, uh, was a connect collection of pulse transformers. It was totally passive, and um, digital pulled off one, one of its great feats of chutzpah here in that it charged a remarkably high monthly maintenance fee for the star coupler, uh, which in reality had practically nothing in it. Um, it, you know, it just wired the computers together. And so that, you know, so that was the hardware configuration of a cluster. 